Moving on to chapter 6, talking about geometry. And we're starting off with a lot of what should be, hopefully, a review from when you took geometry earlier in high school. And we'll start with midpoint and distance. And our prior knowledge from that geometry class tells us when we talked about midpoint and distance in two dimensions, that the midpoint is given by just the average of the x coordinates and the y coordinates. So x plus 1 x1 plus x2 over 2, and y1 plus y2 over 2, right? It gives me a point, because it's a point. So here is my midpoint m, right? And then distance is given based off of the Pythagorean theorem. So it's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So this is based on the Pythagorean theorem. Well, IB likes to take this and extend it into three dimensions, and when we extend it into three dimensions, we're doing just very much the same type of thing. It follows pretty logically that in three dimensions, now I just have an extra z component that I need to account for, so I have x1 plus x2 over 2, I have y1 plus y2 over 2, and I have z1 plus z2 over 2. So we're just adding in a new piece. And distance, the same logic follows. I have the square root of the difference in my x term squared, the difference of my y coordinates squared, and the difference in my z coordinates squared. So all I'm doing is taking my prior knowledge and just extending it out one more dimension. So here's one really quick example. Find the midpoint, and actually we're going to do the distance too. And distance, or I guess the length of AB, when A is 1, 2, 5, and B is 3, 3, 7. So right, I've got two points. I've got 1, 2, 5, 3, 3, 7. So my midpoint is just the average of the x terms, so 1 plus 3 over 2. The average of the y terms, and the average of the z terms, oops, <clears throat> uh, 5 plus 7 over 2. So let's see, 4 divided by 2 is 2, 5 over 2, and 6. And then likewise, with distance, we're going to apply that same type of principle. So the difference in my x components, the difference of my y components, the difference of my z components. So let's see, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4. 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. 7 minus 5 is 2, 2 squared is 4. I get the square root of 9, which of course is 3. And that's all we need right now for midpoint and distance, and we're going to move on from it for now. Um, the other thing we start to introduce or start to review is a little bit of trigonometry. So here is my right triangle, ABC, and the angle BAC. So normally we would say angle BAC, right? But in IB, they use this other notation with a little hat or a caret above the A. So this is IB's notation. And we say that angle BAC is equal to theta. This is just the Greek letter theta. And of course, with our right triangle, we can name our three sides. So I have relative to theta. All I'm going to do right now is relative to wherever my angle theta is. So BC is the side opposite theta. AC is the side adjacent to theta. And AB is the hypotenuse. It's whatever the non-perpendicular side is. Right? ABC and BC are perpendicular, and then AB is the hypotenuse. And based on those facts, we can define our three of our trig functions, our trigonometric ratios or trigonometric functions. We have sine, cosine, and tangent. And if you remember from geometry, sine is just the opposite 
over that hypotenuse. And in this case, um, we can call that BC, the line BC, the line AB. Um, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So that would be the line AC and the line AB, segment AB, I suppose. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh, so BC over AC. And you might remember the mnemonic device. So, ka, toa. Right, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so katoa. Based on all this stuff, what can we start to do? We can um, start to solve for right triangles. We can start to find any missing side, any missing angle. Um, so some problems you might see, um, you might be given, so you're always given a right triangle. you're always given a right triangle. So in addition to that right angle that you know, you might be also given one acute angle, and you might also be given one side. And if that's the case, then you can find the third angle, because we know that the sum of all of the angles have to add up to 180. So we can find the third angle because the sum of all the angles equal 180 degrees. And we can find the other two sides, one by using our trig ratios, and or actually both by using the trig functions, trig ratios, or one with a trig function, one with the Pythagorean theorem. I could also just give you two sides. And if that's the case, you can find the third side, Pythagorean theorem, and then you can find all of the angles using trig. Now, in geometry, you might not have gotten to this. Um, to find missing angles, right, because right now our trig functions, if I think about anything, right, so if I think about like sine theta, I need to know the angle so it'll give me my, um, my value, right? If I tell you over here, if I were to give you like ratios, maybe this is three and five, right? Well, I could tell you that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, 3 over 5. But what if I want to know the angle that produces that number, that produces that ratio? Well, we have inverse trig functions for that purpose, and we have two notations for that. So if I'm going to define a trig ratio, for I'll just use it with sine, but this applies to all three. Um, y equals sine theta, well, then I can express my angle theta by calling it inverse sine of y, or I can also say arc sine of y. Not sure why they call it arc, but they do, so just go with it. Um, one important thing I want to note, though. We're used to seeing this negative 1 to mean the reciprocal of something. I want to make it really clear that sine inverse of something does not mean 1 over sine. This is not true. This means the inverse. Um, we actually have separate functions and separate notation for a reciprocal of sine, and we'll talk about that later on in the chapter. So that's not what that means. It means inverse, not reciprocal. So for example, if I want to find the angle that produces 5 sevenths, I can write this as theta equals either sine inverse of 5 sevenths, or you might see the notation arc sine of 5 sevenths. And regardless, it'll give you, if you put this in your calculator, you, which at this point you kind of have to, approximately an angle of 45.6 degrees. So sine, the ratio of the sides of the opposite and hypotenuse sides of the right triangle knowing that I have an angle of 45.6 degrees somewhere in there is approximately 5 sevenths. So this allows me to find the angle. And this is going to be more important later when we get into, um, into some equation solving with trigonometric functions.